Floor of Yin is a great utility law with some great spells to debuff enemies and buff your own units to give you a distinct advantage in your battles. You also have a nice mix of damage spells as well as a summon, so you really do have a cast for any situation. It may not be as simple to use or flashy as some other laws, but if you can get the hang of it, you can get some extremely good value. And this law can only be used by Cathay. Our first spell is of course the passive of the law, the power of Yin. This targets enemies in a 55 meter area of effect directly around the caster. The effect tag is hit with minus 15 armor and minus 10% speed for 18 seconds. Unlike most passives, this one has a limited range around the caster, so it's better for you to be casting spells when you are very close to enemies to get the most effect. Of course these effects are nothing crazy, but 15 armor can be enough to turn the tide of battle between two heavily armored and evenly matched forces and give your guys the advantage they need. The speed is a minor debuff, but it means anything nearby to the caster will either be easier to pin down with your own troops or easier to run away from should you need to. Overall, a decent passive held back by the range. Just before we get into the spells, a word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by the hottest game ever to hit mobiles since Snake. Yeah, that's right, Raid Shadow Legends. By now, you've probably heard all about how Raid has over 600 champions with unique skills, meaning you can build a team that is truly unique to you. A couple of my favorites have to be Gorgorab, or George as I like to call him, and Corona. George is a great support character with abilities to heal and revive his entire team, whereas Krona is a savage beastman-like creature that can deal insane damage and debuff enemy units to make them easier to take down. When you put these two together, there really isn't much that can stand in your way. As well as all the existing champions, Raid is also celebrating its three year anniversary and they're promising some pretty huge celebrations. To get started, they've released the first ever champion skins for Arbiter and for a first try, I gotta say, they're looking pretty good. So if you'd like to get started in Raid, there really has never been a better time. You can check it out via the link in the description or the QR code over here, and you'll get a free starter pack worth almost $40. It includes three champions in the form of Misericord, Tiger Soul, and Romero, plus 10 Magic XP Brews, 10 Force XP Brews, and 10 Spirit XP Brews to give you a boost as soon as you get started. Now these rewards are only available for new players in the next 30 days, so if you're interested, act fast. Everything will be waiting for you right over here, so just click that link in the description and get raiding. And I return you to your regular scheduled spells. Our first castable spell is Storm of Shadows. It's a hex spell, costs 4 wins of magic, and has a 28 second cooldown. It can all be tagged on enemy units, and has a 200 meter cast range. The affected units suffer minus 45% to speed for 29 seconds. This is of course a great spell for using on fast enemy units, such as skirmishers or cav, to allow your units to catch up to them and take them down. It's pretty straightforward how you want to use this one. Cast it on whichever unit you want to catch up to or run away from, and then move units in to catch up to it or run away from it. As long as you're doing one of these two things, you can't go too far wrong. It can also be useful when chasing down retreating units, as you can slow them down to allow your lads to bog them down and take them out, which is never a bad thing. Overcast costs 8 winds of magic and has a 35 meter area of effect. Again, very similar to the base spell, but now you can hit several enemies in an area. You still want to use it the same as before to catch or run away from something. Of course, the percentage based debuffs will get more value the faster a unit is, but it's honestly not that big a difference, so just place it on whatever you want to slow down and hit a load of units in an area to get the most value that you possibly can. Next, we have Cloak of Jets, and this is a hiding spell. It costs 4 winds of magic and has a 28 second cooldown. It can all be targeted on friendly units and has a 200 meter cast range. The affected units are granted Sniper, Stalk, and Unspottable for 29 seconds. This one is obviously great for hiding your units from enemy view, which can be useful for a massive number of things. It can allow you to move in some units for an unexpected flank. It can allow you to have your units firing from a hidden location and deal a ton of damage before the enemy can stop you. It can help you get your units away from enemies via disappearing into the air and retreating to a safe location. Just always bear in mind that once the effects run out, you will then be fully visible, so make sure you're in a decent location, otherwise the enemy can quickly turn on you if you're isolated. The overcast costs 6 winds of magic and increases the duration to 58 seconds. You want to use this upgrade when you want a unit to stay hidden for even longer. I would say the best units to use this on would be range, since it will allow them to do more damage whilst the spell is active. Other units such as Cav going for a flank won't get the value as they want to charge in as soon as they are able, so the extended duration is of little use to them. The next spell is Blossom Wind, and this is of course a wind spell, it costs 9 winds of magic and has a 45 second cooldown. It can all be targeted on the ground and has a 200 meter cast range. It deals moderate armor piercing damage in a 5 meter sized forward moving area of effect over 10 seconds, and it imbues blinded on hit units. As with most wind spells like this, it's most effective when you are fighting the enemy in flat lines so you can go down and hit multiple units in one go. 
The damage dealt is pretty decent armor piercing, so you should be able to take out some mid-game troops with decent efficacy, as well as slaughtering anything reliant on physical protection. On top of this, the blinded effect will make whatever unit it hits much weaker in combat, causing them to take even more damage and deal less to whatever they're fighting. All this combined can rapidly change the course of the battle and give your units a huge advantage. Just be careful when aiming, as I experienced a lot of inaccuracy as it seemed to veer off to one side the further the cast went, no matter how hard I tried to correct it. The overcast costs 14 winds of magic and increases the damage by 50%. If you're going against units with a little more armor, this is going to be the spell you want, since the decent armor piercing damage will crack through those defenses and deal some great damage right to the HP bar. If you're against units with armor above 50, then this is the spell for you to ensure that damage gets through. Of course, it will still have the blinded effect for even more value, so you can't really go wrong. Just be careful with both versions, as you can still hit your own dudes if you aren't careful. The next spell is Missile Mirror, and this is a hex spell, costs 10 winds of magic, and has a 44 second cooldown. It can only be targeted on enemy missile units, and has a 200 meter cast range. It of course redirects projectiles back towards the unit that fired them for 18 seconds. Of course, this one wants to be cast on the highest damage output missile units you can find to turn that pain right back on themselves. If you can, you want to time it right before they fire a volley to ensure you're reflecting the most amount of shots back to them in the short duration. It's more effective versus infantry type units like the Flamers or the Pink Horrors of Siege, since they will be firing more shots at once when compared to artillery, so damage will be more likely to hit something and deal meaningful damage. That being said, the Exalted Flamer really does tend to shred itself. Nothing more to it than that, really. The Overcast costs 15 Winds of Magic, increases the cast range to 400 meters and the duration to 36 seconds. You want to use it the same as the base spell, but save this one for units at full HP that are about to cause some serious pain to make the most of that extended duration. The extra cast range is also pretty nice if you're aiming for some units with a massive firing range like crane gunners, but that duration should be the reason you upgrade. Find those high damage ranged units and watch them tear themselves apart. Next we have Talons of Night. This is a vortex spell, costs 14 winds of magic and has a 50 second cooldown. It can all be targeted on the ground and has a 200 meter cast range. It deals moderate armor piercing damage constantly in a 15 meter area of effect over 11 seconds. This is a great spell for using on a large clump of enemy units that aren't going to be moving anywhere. That constant armor piercing damage will quickly rack up and take a massive chunk from even the most armored of enemy units. That massive radius means you can hit multiple units at once if they are clumped close enough to each other, and once you do, the damage numbers of this spell really start to skyrocket. Of course, there's not much to stop enemies from simply walking out of the damage, so pairing this with the Storm of Shadows, or simply surrounding the enemy with other units to bog them down, would go a long way to increasing the damage even further. Of course, just be careful to keep your own lads safe, as it can hit them just as easily. The other cast costs 21 Winds of Magic and doubles the damage. Now this can do some serious amounts of damage, so save it for the highest armor on the enemy side and target the fattest clump you can. Follow all the same rules as the base spell, just target those more armored targets if you can. Still avoid your own lads, as this damage can be just as devastating to them as it can to your enemies, and it is extremely devastating. Our final spell is Ancestral Warriors. This is a summon spell, costs 16 winds of magic, has a 52 second cooldown, as well as a limit of two uses per battle. It can all be targeted on the ground and has a 50 meter cast range. It summons a unit of Ancestral Warriors, and the summoned units of course degrade over time. The units summoned are ethereal halberd units with great armor piercing, magical and anti-large damage, meaning they can put down some serious punishments on pretty much anything you pit them against. On top of this, they can cause terror and have expert charge defense, so are monsters on the battlefield that are unpleasant for anyone to go against. Just make sure you keep them safe from magical damage, as without their resistance, they have no armor and not the most HP, so will go down very quickly. Summon them to take out large targets that are harassing your caster as they should melt them with relative ease. They can also be a great addition to the front lines, but just bear in mind that short cast range and don't put your caster in an unfortunate position if you can help it. The other cast costs 22 winds of magic and extends the cast range to 150 meters. An extra 6 winds of magic for a longer cast range is a bit of a steep ask, and I honestly can't recommend you use this overcast unless it is literally impossible to move your caster closer to the target location. I only to explain how to use this since it's pretty obvious. If you want to summon them far from your caster, and can't get there in enough time, then use this. Simple as that. And that concludes this guide on the lore of Yin. Let me know what you think of the lore in the comments below. Let me know if you thought this video by leaving a like or a dislike. And if you want to see more content like this, then be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a video. I'd like to take this time to thank all the supporters of the channel, like Dominic Schmas and Adam T, and of course Henry Tucker for their support at the Unclean Ones tier. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so here on YouTube or over on Twitch and Patreon to get shout outs at the end of videos just like these wonderful people. Huge thanks to all supporters, one final thank you for watching, and for now, I've been Colonel Danders, and I will see you next turn.